mm-hmm. that somehow we, we as consciousness, we are cooperating with this delusion somehow. You have so much power, all the power is with you, but we hand it to the mind, which tyrannizes your spirit, keeps you feeling divided, because this is how it rules. It is the supreme politician. Divide and rule, this is what it is. Divide and rule. So you remain the undivided seer, you are the one who is aware of all of this. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I feel a block. I've got a block. It's um, mm-hmm. probably similar to the last few people that have been up here. So mm-hmm. um, it's like a pressure in my face, mm-hmm. behind my face, mm-hmm. and it gets to a certain point, and then I think I identify with it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but I can't get past it. <clears throat> yeah, a block come. One of the things that happens when we are using mind, sometimes it goes into like seizure, pulls the curtains down. Um, If I'm trying to look outside at something and you pull the curtains, I can't see. Then I may have to ask you, I don't know, I can't see anymore what is there. But yourself is not over there behind the curtain. Yourself is the one who is seeing. So if you want to see something else, then you'll have to pull the curtain. But if you want to know the Self, the curtain is irrelevant. The mind is trying to fix you to see objects. It will even create an object out of silence or space or the Self or enlightenment. It will put something and you look, you're looking and using imagination, but the Self is imageless. It is imageless. So therefore, when a blank comes, I say, don't panic. You are that which is observing the blank. Don't think that the blank is blocking something that's of value. The blank is just a kind of bluff. It's just a bluff from the mind itself. You understand what bluff is? It's just a trick. (laughs) <laughs> okay, but that's just an effect also. A blank is just an effect. Then the mind is going, okay, now you have to wait until I'm ready to show you. <laughs> but then you see, but this is just an effect. I am the one seeing. It is so obvious, we are missing the obvious. You are the seer. The question, can the seer be seen? And then your, the mind is showing you objects. Oh, look, the seer. No, no, it's not this. Oh, what about this? No, it's not that. What about blank? No, it's not that. <laughs> yeah? So something knows it's not, it's not going to be anything that can be discerned. It's not a feeling. It's not a, it's not a beautiful image. It's not anything that you can see or have seen before. You have never seen the Self. You have never seen the Self, not phenomenally. You are the Self. I gave the example, like a knife can cut so many things, but it cannot cut itself, because it is one unit, one whole. Or the eyes can see so many things, but they can't see themselves. They can't do it, because it is one thing, or a scale that can weigh so many objects, but it cannot weigh itself. You are the Self. You cannot see yourself. You can only see from yourself. 
it was St. Francis, I think he says, no? what you are looking for is already where you are looking from. We are that, but out of training with the mind is always trained in the instrument for tasting variety and interpretation and so on. So we are trying to use the mind which needs something to look at, something to compare, to find that which has no form, has no weight, has no texture. That which perceives even perceiving, sees even seeing, but itself cannot be seen, because it is beyond all forms, all names, all quality. But because we believe in our psyche that we are a person, that we are a thing, that we are an object, although intellectually, mentally we are saying, I know I am the Absolute, but it has no power, because your body language gives you away that you think you are an object. Someone steps on your foot, hey, you stepped on me, it is not you on your foot, like this. And so this is why I say something is hidden behind the intellect. Intellect is not enough. It was never enough. This is why we say, I understand it. Intellectually means I don't understand it. I don't really understand it. No, it's not my experience. It's just, mm, I learned this. This is what I say. So nothing is wrong with you. Just we are paying attention to an effect uh, that is in the mind, because we give the mind a lot of authority a lot of importance, and so it appears as though the mind will one day cooperate. But no, it won't. The mind one day is going to give you a holiday. Look, I've troubled you for so long. Uh, I will stay here, look after the house, you go away and have a holiday. No, it's not going to happen. You want a holiday from the mind, you stay as yourself. This is what happened. Uh, so this thing I'm pointing out, it is the recognition of the obvious. Blank means nothing. Now my mind is really angry. So what? So what? Let it be angry. What can it do? It can only do something if you keep on being mesmerized by it. Some people I see them like, you know, like, don't upset my mind. Don't upset my mind. That's like if he wakes up, <laughs> What to do? Uh, the thing is, this the sensation. It's like when I'm resting in uh, awareness, mm. uh, it kind of it keeps on. The pressure keeps on kind of increasing. Mm. It gets to a certain point where it's just kind of uncomfortable, and it's like uh, I can't. Um, mm. It ju it just kind of you distracts me. You can change resting in awareness to resting as awareness. It's a difference. <coughs> if you're resting in awareness, yeah. it's like two things. Like we're sitting in this room. So there's room and us, two things. When you're resting as awareness, you are awareness itself. And when you are awareness, the effects arising in consciousness, mind and body are just apparent. They're playing. Even the effect of the body. Just like some people, uh, they can lose the hand, but they will still eat with the other hand. Uh, uh, you know, well, your hand is uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, they can't say, don't, don't worry about it. Okay? And some people will call off work sick for the whole day because they broke their fingernail or something. Okay? This is the, the extent to which we give importance to your body. And when you are the Self, somehow you are aware of the body, of the mind, of the process of feelings and all of that. Something allows them to dance, knowing you are not that. It may not sound very good to your mind, but in the experience of it, it's so beautiful, it's okay, you're at peace. It doesn't mean that somehow something is really, your, your, your leg is injured and bleeding and you don't pay attention. No, you, you give it the attention that's needed. But uh, no more than this. Something is, you're not so pulled off center by these effects. So at the moment, what's happening is that there's a relationship with the mind and it's almost as though the mind now has become like a separate entity. 
so that it says, if you do that, I'm going to punish you. Look. Uh, oh, it's, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, I won't go there. Okay, I won't. <laughs> like this. So, <laughs> with it's like this, I say, oh no, let it do. Let, let, let this body blow up. But uh, I am only staying here. Let it do whatever it's going to do. Ramana Maharshi, when he was 16 years old, I think he was visiting his uncle's place and he had a panic attack and he felt, I'm going to die. He was certain in his heart, I'm going to die. And uh, so um, he felt, okay, nobody was there to call and he felt, okay, I'm going to just cooperate with this. And he lied down like a corpse and waited for death to come. He says, if it's going to happen, I don't want to miss it. I want to watch what happened. Okay, surrender to the experience, and you could feel something moving like, you know, oh, here it comes, but it never came. What instead happened was that a powerful conviction became apparent that but something here cannot die. The body might go, but there is something that just announced itself so powerfully that for the rest of his earthly existence, he could never forget it. There is something here that is beyond the body's reach. It is deathless. This is a mortal body, but an immortal being moves in it. And this challenge of the human experience is to discover that I am that. Not believe only, but to know irrefutably, I am then all your sorrows are over. All your depressions, fears, future, time, relationship, all of this will not command your being. It will dance as the effects of consciousness in its dance as existence, this is fine. So if these things happen, you feel effects going in the body and let them happen. Say, throw your best punch. Show your best punch. Because in my own case, some fears come, and fears that you would not imagine also it didn't have anything to do. I had one fear also when it was came, coming time to look at some things coming up, and I'm saying, Yes, I surrender to this. And this feeling was coming that I was going to be a hunchback, Quasimodo. No? Now, I said before, there's nothing in my culture about Quasimodo. But somehow I could see myself hobbling down the road. <laughs> all these ideas, all these fears come. People start to develop very strange fears. It's all the game of the mind. Just you say yes, like I did. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Very great. <laughs> say yes, and uh, that was it. Okay, do throw your best punch. Yeah. But I will not live uh, blackmailed by this delusion. I don't care if my life um, doesn't go one more day. But no, to live under the tyranny of the mind, no. That was the conviction. Then I call you to that much courage in yourself. Because all the beings in the world somehow are under the influence of this conditioning, this fear this fear and this compromise and say, say yes and mean it. Even one man, he came to um, Christ and asked him, you know, my child is dying, please, if you can do something, please help me. And the Lord says, if all things are possible, for the one who believes. Then this man said, Lord, I do believe. Help me to overcome my disbelief. What humility. But you first make your stand. You say, yes, like this. Because if you are going to fight the mind, you will not win. Don't get into a street fight with your mind. You will not win. Overcome it with the same way I have pointed you. You are the witness of it. It's like it doesn't want you to know that. 
because there lies your power, that you are the weakness of this mind. And the more you come into the recognition, I am observing that it is what comes and goes, not me. I watch its effect coming and going. The mind cannot come and stay. Mind cannot come and stay. The only way mind can come and sort of stay is to embed itself in your memory. But in its actual effect it comes and then it goes, but it gets perpetuated through memory. Then you think you give him some extra visa life, yeah, you know. You are important, then you log it inside. This is all this is happening. And I want to open these pages in the sunlight so you know and see and acknowledge hmm, that somehow we we as consciousness we are cooperating with this delusion somehow. You have so much power, all the power is with you, but we hand it to the mind, which tyrannizes your spirit, keeps you feeling divided, because this is how it rules. It is the supreme politician. Divide and rule, this is what it is. Divide and rule. So you remain the undivided seer, you are the one who is aware of all of this thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there is a lot of fear in it because uh, last year, about well, about ten months ago or so, I didn't really. I was some, uh, I read some books on spirituality, and um, I kind of thought like I'd, I found something, you know, that I was looking for, and uh, I freaked out like so. My mind just like kind of, <laughs> I was literally kind of losing my mind, like, yeah. and uh, it kind of almost scra scrambled back, like almost. I felt like, <clears throat> and now it's almost doing a better job of kind of running the show, like so. Yeah, so it kind of feels like it's kind of difficult to get over this. Kind it of is important, <coughs> really. This is why it is important. In the past, people would go and you would spend time. In the olden days, you would spend twelve years in the presence of a master to slowly imbibe their ways, to listen to the teachings, and to. To, to bring it internally and to be watched over and checked in with and to make sure that your knowledge is not just some kind of arrogance to squeeze that out and to make sure that you completed your seeing. These days nobody has this time for these things. Now a more direct way is pointed. But it's important to have a kind of support also. This is what we try also to do when we have a retreat to give you a space and environment to encourage you other beings are also on the same journey of looking into truth, and they are your family, actually. And in the Sangha, true Sangha, support each other. When you see someone is crashing a little bit down, then you can say, Look, you know, come on, what you're doing, don't you remember that this is just something? And you can brighten up again. So uh, it's important, and if you don't have that support sometimes, you know, then uh, the mind isolates you, then you're, it's like this, it can feel like that. A little bit like this. It still somehow belongs to your path somehow for that time. I am here to tell you there is nothing to be afraid. Not now. You see, you cannot force it, but if something genuine inside you, then that is an impulse from the universe, from your own Satguru, who is inside your heart. Uh, you are not going to be alone as a person you may find that you are alone as everything. This is different. You cannot beat the mind by being the mind, by being the person, you see. You defeat it by realizing, I am consciousness. Then the same mind will join force with you and be a wonderful servant. This, what you are speaking now, is really the reason why so many people over the ages come to this point, they turn back. Because in they have a memory that somehow this happened to me before and I went through a season of complete craziness. And some people have different complexes, they start to the ego comes up. They start to believe that they are here to save the world and you know that they are, you know, commanding even the angelic forces and all type of stuff. We have plenty of them in my town. Uh, this kind of this type of you know messiah complex or whatever, and the ego goes into this big campaign 
They said, therefore, just watch this, just keep quiet. No one knows the power of the innocence of one's own Buddha nature, your Christ consciousness, your Shiva being, same thing. It's an innocence. It's not a rule, it's an innocence, and this innocence has tremendous power. It is the greatest miracle that a human being born with so much challenges can rise like like the lotus flower, isn't it? It grows in the pond, in the mud pond, but it remains all its life untouched. You know about those lotus? They say even if the rain falls heavily and the waters rise, the lotus will still be always above the water. And this is the nature of the spirit. If I don't talk to you about these things, then you are going to find out about them another way, maybe by surprise. I don't want to give you just some flowery feelings, but to show you what you will feel up against for a while, so that your realization is permanent and true, not fickle. So everything that's happened to you, uh, bear in mind, it's happened before to other beings over the centuries. It's happened, and they have transcended. And if even one has done it, it shows that all can do it. Not all can do it at the same time. There are some beings who cannot be here. Even if you pay their fears and put them here in the best hotel and bring them in, they can't stay. They run out screaming, because as yet their minds are not in affinity with this, not ready. And we must respect that. Now it's your turn. Your sister, your brother, your mother is not here. You are here. Make use of this time. In my view, I don't see a higher purpose for the human instrument than to recognize this, this, this great understanding, this great understanding of who we are. I don't see anything. Myself, I cannot say that I lived a boring life, but nothing can compare to having come to that recognition of the truth we are. Out of that truth, that love which I found, somehow the energy has come to continuously put in front of you, remind you, look, 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 don't keep going there, look here, spend a moment here, give full attention to yourself just for this moment. Otherwise, you back down and you settle for a compromise, and you will continue to evolve in a slow way. You find another way that is more slow, more gentle, that doesn't threaten your ego. Find a way that doesn't threaten your ego. Is this what you want? Yours is a mighty being. Mighty being. It is behind this entire universe. What we are is not different from that which gives life and expression to this entire universe. Our expression as existence came out of that, and that is this here, not, not this, this. Mind can only offer you a version, a portrait, a portrayal of this, but a portrait is not you. Still attached to a lot of ideas or images I have about myself as well. Yeah. So they're kind of bundled up with the fear, or they're kind of connected to it. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> you can begin by looking. You know who who is uh, who is so afraid? And this is not a cynical question, like who is afraid? No, not a boastful question. But really go to the heart to see who is the one who is afraid, if it can be identified, and you will come to some discovery. You will see that it is mostly from the mind itself. 
then it doesn't feel enough, even knowing it is the mind. You have to keep on checking in, check out so many things we are holding on to which are not true. They are not in service to your truth. In fact, they are the opposite. They pull you down, even. You can observe from the place of awareness. This is what I have come to show you also. Bhagwan has told you the same thing. My master has so told me I said the same thing, pointed it out. Some will get it, some will not get it. Simple, simple. But the mind is building something else, building something else. For a while, I don't know what to say about that. Go and reflect on what we have spoken about. Look, look with it. With the short time we have now, look, look at it. Everything is in front of you. Everything is available. Go and take a look quietly. Okay, thank you. Very good. Mind cannot come and stay. Mind cannot come and stay. The only way mind can come and sort of stay is to embed itself in your memory. But in its actual effect, it comes and then it goes. But it gets perpetuated through memory. Then you think you give him some extra visa life. Yeah, you know, you are important. Then you log it inside. This is all this is happening. And I want to open these pages in the sunlight so you know and see and acknowledge hmm, that somehow we, we as consciousness, we are cooperating with this delusion somehow. You have so much power, all the power is with you, but we hand it to the mind, which tyrannizes your spirit, keeps you feeling divided because this is how it rules. It is the supreme politician. Divide and rule. This is what it is. Divide and rule. So you remain the undivided seer. You are the one who is aware of all of this thing. It is the greatest miracle that a human being born with so much challenges can rise like like the lotus flower, isn't it? It grows in the pond, in the mud pond, but it remains all its life untouched. You know about those lotus, they say even if the rain falls heavily and the waters rise, the lotus will still be always above the water. And this is the nature of the Spirit.